Now let me give you a, a slightly more interesting one and one where it's not just harder but it's, it's interesting in that we have to make some choices as we go about solving this question. So uh, this is Isles actually, I found this example following up your question last time about you know can we call them R1 and R2 when we got a couple of lines. So I found a place where the textbook does exactly that, right? So here are two lines on the right hand side and our question is um, determine if R1 and R2 meet at right angles. Okay, so that's that's the um, question that's been posed to us. Okay, now in two dimensions, uh, what would we do with a question like this? If I gave you two lines um, and I asked you, do they meet at right angles? What would you do in two dimensions? Yeah, you, you just have a look at the gradients, right? Now, in this context, uh, and then, sorry, I should ask, what would you do with the gradients? Oh, then you have to, yeah, negative one. Yep, you want the product to be equal to negative one, right? And that's fine, okay? What you're answering in this case is the at right angles part, yeah? Because if they are perpendicular, then we know their gradients relate in a certain way. Now, in the same way, uh, or in a, a similar way, there's um, something that we do for this question, right? To work out whether two vectors are, are at right angles to each other, whether they're orthogonal, we're not going to use gradients for a start because um, we, we don't have a gradient. What do we have? What's equivalent to the gradient in this? Uh, the what's it called again? The, what's it called? Uh, the no, one starts with P, one starts with D. <laughs> Direction. It's the yeah, it's the direction vector is equivalent to gradient in this context, right? So you can um, all see the direction vectors over here on the right hand side. Um, they are the part we're going to be looking at. Uh, we're not going to take them and um, get a product of negative one. What are we looking for if they are at right angles? What should the direct direction vectors? How should they be related? Their dot product should be the degrees. It, yeah, zero. it should be zero. Very good. So, um, and I'm I'm gonna call this like oops, sorry, wrong uh, thing there. I'm gonna call this vector a and this vector b. So what we want is uh, a dot b should equal zero. Um, if if it is true that um, they're at right angles. Okay, now. That is totally sufficient in, in two dimensions, okay? Just, just do the gradients, they multiply to negative one or they don't and you're done, okay? However, in three dimensions, this isn't enough. I actually don't have enough information to answer the question appropriately. Can anyone tell me what's missing in three dimensions rather than in two, there's an extra thing I have to do? could like be over the top of each other and never actually touch. Yeah, very good. So you can still have two lines that are orthogonal, like here, uh, here my, my, hand, my arms are orthogonal to each other, right? But they don't, they don't meet, they don't intersect. We had a name for this, by the way. I just very briefly mentioned it last time. It starts with an S, does anyone remember? Yeah, so, so these can be skew lines. They're orthogonal, but they don't intersect, they don't meet, okay? Now, can you guys tell me, why don't I have to ask this question in two dimensions? Because there's no, there's no other sort of like, I guess, plane that you could like move up on. It's always going to be it's parallel. Yeah, very good. So in two dimensions, everything's on the one plane. And so if you're not parallel, you've got to intersect somewhere, right? Um, however, that's not true in three dimensions. You can miss all the time, um, which is a really good thing for planes and air control towers. Like, thank goodness things can miss in three dimensions. And so what we actually need to do as a secondary thing is we have to talk about do the lines meet, right? Now, what we're going to have to do here is we are going to, well, do you remember? We actually did one of these last time, right? We are going to have to try and find a point of intersection, right? We will either find a point of intersection or we won't. And so this is what is going to tell us um, firstly whether they meet and then secondly at right angles. Okay, so these are the two things we gotta do and that gives us now, or it presents to us a choice, right? Um, I have to do these, I have to meet these two conditions. So my question to all of you is, which condition should I try to meet first? Because um, one of these things is easier to work out than the other and it would feel really silly to do the hard one first. Go through all of this work and it's like, yeah, cool. And then we find out the other one doesn't work. And so there was kind of no point doing all that work. So out of these two things, finding a point of intersection or working out a dot product, which would you think is easier? 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah, ab yeah, absolutely. Yes. So finding the dot product is absolutely faster. Um, you know, it, it's worth mentioning if they said prove that R1 and R2 meet at right angles, it's like, well, okay, I already know ahead of time that I'm going to get the right answer. So it doesn't matter which order, right? But in this case, it says determine. So I don't actually know. And they will equally give you questions where they do and they don't. So in this case, let's do the dot product first. So I'm even going to write for myself dot product and it is true. This is pretty easy to work out. So I'm just going to look at A and B, my direction vectors, and I'm just going to write them down. So I've got, oh, sorry, the first one is positive. One, negative one and two dot, uh, what have we got here? Three, negative one, negative two. Okay, what do we get? So I'm multiplying across. Can you tell me what three values I get? Three, I, oh no, just three, sorry. Yep. Three plus one minus four. Very good. And you can see, uh, like, oh, okay, great. This is zero. So this is worth pursuing. That was very little effort, thank goodness. So at this point, I would say, therefore, R1 is orthogonal to R2. So now the rest of the effort is actually worth it. Um, I'm going to now go ahead and work out a point of intersection, okay? So this is my secondary part. Obviously, I didn't even need to do this if I found out that the um, lines were not orthogonal, um, but now I can proceed, okay? So can you help me remember, um, now the position vector, which we ignored before, it is important. What am I gonna do to find a point of intersection if there is one? You let the equations yeah, fantastic. So I'm going to equate the components and I do like to write that um, they're just two words, they don't take long, but what that does is it sort of, it, it frames and it gives meaning to all of the equations that are flying around, right? So I'm equating the components, I'm going to have an X and a Y and a Z, okay? So um, go ahead and um, help me out there. Maybe Ryan, I'll put you on the spot. Can you tell me what's the equation I get from the X components? Uh, negative 1 plus lambda equals negative 5 plus 3 mu. Okay, fantastic. Uh, Mrs. Isles, can you tell me the y equation? Um, negative lambda equals 2 plus negative mu. Mm -hmm, fantastic. So I'm going to go uh, one step more. I'm going to add the zero there, and then I'm going to go minus mu. Those are equivalent, yeah? Uh, but it's just for me to know, make sure I've got all of the points there. And then, Sean, can you finish us off with the z equation? Yeah, okay, hang on a second. You're right. Uh, Take your time. Uh, is it just from the ones above? You just go. Across yeah. Here. It's just across here. Yeah, there's. 5 plus 2 lambda. 5 plus 2 lambda? Equals? 5 plus. Oh, 5 minus negative 2. Oh, I'm sorry. 5 minus 2 plus 2. Yeah, very good. Very good. That's okay. We got there in the end. So there's a lot of. Um, there's a lot of Greek letters flying around, so don't feel too bad. So I've got an equation one, an equation two, and an equation three. 